Hey! <laughs> so, hair's a little messed up. Hey, it's probably kind of loud, but I, that's why I stepped off to the side here. I wanted to... One of my very favorite places in the world. Um, so, four years ago, I was having dinner in Grand Marais, and my waiter had worked uh, for the tribal... Anishinaabe, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Police? Somehow, and so he. I'm on. This is Indian land right now where I am, and um, but the, but I'm welcome on it. I'm not trespassing. And uh, so that over there, the other side of the river, that's Canada. Yeah. So, and uh, here I'm in the good old USA, and that is called Partridge Falls. Partridge Falls, and the river is the Pigeon River. So I'm very near the very tip of uh, Minnesota, uh, north of Lake Superior, right? So, you know, I probably won't be there back home till Wednesday night. This is Tuesday. I thought I'd uh, just show you one of my favorite places in the world. And uh, my hair's a little wet because um, I was just standing kind of near the base of the falls. It's a lovely uh, prayer meditation spot. Um, it's not a real windy day, but the falls themselves create a wind. So you stay at the base of the falls, and, and this water is, is rushing at you. It gets your face wet, your hair wet, and, uh, and and the wind is kind of blasting you. So it's almost like, I feel like it's a power washing for the soul. And it's, it's, so it's like uh, the... Um, that 51st Psalm that we pray during Lent, Ash Wednesday especially, uh, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, a uh, willing spirit place in me. Uh, to kind of stand at the base of that and feel blasted by this wind and, and wet, like with the waters, like, you know, baptism, new birth. Um, it does, you know, those places are great. You know, you should be able to pray like that anywhere, but sometimes uh, having a spot with that sort of uh, environmental cue can be very, very powerful, and it, it is for me. Um, it's just like all the, all this, all the stuff that doesn't give glory to God with your life. All the stuff that's petty. Uh, all the things that make us a little resistant or difficult, and being generous. Just blow that away. <laughs> just blow that away to me. Power wash my heart. You know. So that's part of it. And um, I also think, I don't know if you have a favorite psalm. Um, nice, so I got, a, I got a couple that I like. 23rd is so good. 27th I love. Um, one thing I ask of you, O Lord, this alone I seek, to dwell in your house forever, all my days. I think that's good. But the 42nd, um, the 42nd Psalm mentions waterfalls, and I love it too. That's one that as the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long for you. Got something in my eye here. And, uh, but um, I know the songs that we sing to it more than the Psalms, but echoes meet as deep as calling unto deep over my head, over my head, all your rushing waters sweeping over me. Uh, I think the. It's a, the Hebrew word for a waterfall gets translated as cataract sometime, uh, but it's, it's something like this, that um, let me feel united with you, let your mighty waters sweep over me, you know? So um, anyway, so I'm feeling that here today. It's a great place to, to go, and I uh, just snuck up here for a couple days. Um, I miss uh, having the... Uh, big group for daily mass on Tuesday. We have like triple the size of our usually daily mass on Tuesdays, I think because it's followed by a rosary and uh, uh, Eucharistic adoration for an hour. So if you ever want to do that, you don't know about that. So our Tuesday mass is at nine and at 9.30, I expose the blessed sacrament. Um, there's a rosary for, uh, you know, 12 minutes and then uh, a silent prayer uh, with the Blessed Sacrament on the altar exposed in the monstrance until 10.30 and then I, I, I do a benediction or a blessing with the very body of Christ over the people. So that was this morning, but it was lay lit because I wasn't there, which is 
all for the good. I just love how um, we have uh, lay people, you know, trained and educated like Christine, you know, through MDiv and all that. Uh, she, so she's very educated in ministry. Uh, but the, the rest of us, too, a lot of people with a willing spirit and, and willing to take some guidance, do a lot of leading in our uh, in our parish at St. James. And that makes it really, really healthy, I think. See all that, you see all that wood mist blowing that way? That's, uh, that's where I was standing. So just get all that, just that blows it. And while I was standing there, I saw two uh, more, like four or five dragonflies, big dragonflies. And they're just kind of flying up to the mist and then flying back and then flying up and flying back. And, you know, I think of animals as just doing what they got to do to survive, you know. But it looked to me like they were just having fun. They were just playing, you know. I don't know how it would have um, aided their uh, survival just to kind of play around in the mist of the waterfall. So anyway, that was kind of fun. It made me want to be playful and enjoy the goodness of God in this beautiful spot as well. Um, so, so, so a little parish news. So, uh, Christine said that a, preliminary indications are that not only was Summerfest a happy, joyful community building event, but looks like it's going to do pretty well financially as well. So, thanks for the mega sponsors. Thanks for everybody that bought a raffle ticket. Thanks uh, to everybody that showed up and just you know helped contribute to it. Again, you know, we do it as a fundraiser. Um, if it were just a fundraiser and people were just crabby about it, that would be no fun and we'd probably stop doing it. But, you know, <laughs> as long as it generates joy and community and uh, and we make some money, that's great. Um, some uh, people have been asking, I keep forgetting to mention, uh, we're still trying to fine tune the plans about the new choir space, which will involve removing some pews in front of the tabernacle. We discern that exhaustively. Uh, last year and and uh, well not unanimous there was a strong consensus people seem to understand the reasons we wanted to do that and um, the advantages of doing that I should say and um, and the diocese approved that that would be fine and so we just have to fine-tune it and find some contractors and that would happen so that's, that that'd be big news uh, you hate to lose the seating but there'd be alternate seating created in the choir loft and, and around that music area as well um, what else? Uh, so I won't be here this weekend. I'll be here Friday night for the wedding of Michael Shady and Deborah Skalecki. Yeah, that'll be a very joyful uh, Friday afternoon wedding. And then after that, I'm gonna go down to Milwaukee to be with my, my friend who had that bicycling accident. He's, he's recuperating, thanks for your prayers. If you're able to pray, his name's Mark. And um, Every day he's getting a little better. He seems to have a good attitude. He's got a lot of family support down there, wife and uh, two children. And I uh, hope to lend a little support uh, for a couple days as well. Um, but, so I, he said a lot of the swelling went down. He had this massive re uh, surgery on his femur, a very damaged femur, and so there's a rod there. Anyway, he's got to learn how to walk without putting weight on it and all those things. So, um, you keep him in your prayers. My mother fell again. I didn't get great details from my brother who was with him, her, um, but it sounds like maybe she broke her ulna bone, her forearm bone. She had broken her wrist. I'll have to get the details when I get home, but um, it's too bad. It, it, the, the, the injury itself is bad, but um, I just think with her memory deficits, it's hard for her to learn that she can't just get out of bed and walk over to the bathroom in the middle of the night. This will be, keep happening. So so that's a big concern for us. So we'll see um, how that goes. We keep her, her, so those are, in my life, things that I'm uh, praying for. And so uh, I think they're on the prayer chain as well. So we join those needs with a lot of the other needs. Um, we got a missionary priest coming this weekend, Father Sanu Joes. I believe he's from India. He's a Vincentian priest, uh, following the charism of St. Vincent de Paul, who was a great missionary to the poor people in France, where he was. And his uh, brethren continue that uh, mission to reach out to the poor. So he'll be talking and preaching, and uh, we'll finish off our Bread of Life discourse. I gave people a little bit of a heads up on where that was going last week, because it was my last weekend uh, with you for those readings. But I'm sure um, it's not because I didn't think he would do a great job. I just thought maybe he was going to preach 
more about his missionary activities than the scriptures. We had that lovely uh, baptism at 10 o'clock. Uh, speaking of guest priests, uh, Shelby, Shelby's brother Matthew Bovey is a priest and, and he took the morning off at his parish in Cashton, Norwalk. And he came up and he presided at our 10 o'clock mass and uh, officiated the baptism and that was just lovely. So uh, that was good. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know if I have really too much more to say. It'd be a, it's a brief one. I mainly thought, oh, I gotta try to film this. I don't know if you're, I'm kind of trying to shout so you can hear me. Uh, if you can't hear me real well, I'll probably post this anyway, just for the beauty of it, and then maybe catch up later in the week with everybody. Um, let's see. Kelly and Beth went down to La Crosse to hear the bishop speak and to have mass with him. And Kelly said he was just talking for 10 minutes and she had a whole page of notes. So I can't, same with me. When he spoke to the priest, I think I shared on one of my chats what he said. And uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing from Beth and Kelly at our next staff meeting about, but it's just great when people go down and they hear the bishop speak and they're, and they're excited. And they're like, wow, there's really, the spirit's moving in our diocese at the highest level. And so that is, that's really good to hear. Um, uh, Patrice seems to be doing well. And a lot of people are just kind of pretty worked out, I think, from, from Summerfest. And, uh, Anne's always does so much with all of our office management and she was a big, you know, with Kelly, but she kind of was the big go-between between, between all the contractors and the buildings and grounds and the designers for a kitchen renovation. So that's pretty much done now. Still some tweaking to go. Um, what are the big three events we got coming up? Icon workshop, $270, but you get an icon when you leave that you wrote, that you created under the guidance of a professional who's coming up from Madison. So if you want to do that, September 13th to the 15th, um, Stephanie Saldana, author, that'll be the next book club block. This book club meeting, oh my gosh. No, no, it's next next Tuesday. I thought, oh, I can't stay till Wednesday. We have book club, <laughs> but that's next. That's the next week. So the following weekend, Tuesday, we'll have our book club, uh, How to Not Be Afraid. That is a dense book. I'm spending a lot of time with just a couple pages. It's, uh, but hopefully good and fruitful for our discussion next week. After that, we'll do uh, everything, uh, it's called What is Remembered Will Be Saved by Stephanie Saldana. And she will come on Tuesday, October 22nd to St. James, all the way from Bethlehem in Israel. She's doing a Midwest book tour. Uh, she interviews refugees and asks them, what did you take with you when you left your home and why? And, and she's a lovely, lovely person. I can't wait for her to be at St. James. So mark your calendar. And then the um, St. John, John's retreat, I think I have room for like one more, but I'm happy to take a waiting list. Almost always people sign up and then say they can't go. So uh, and it, doesn't, you know, it doesn't even have to be a waiting list. I can call the, the guest house and get some more rooms. Uh, we just have to make sure we have enough drivers. So, But it looks like for sure we'll be going. It's Monday and Tuesday, October 28th, 29th, St. John's Abbey, uh, to have a retreat there with the monks. They're not gonna lead the retreat, but we will, we will join them for their prayers and their Eucharist have some free time for reflection among ourselves and by ourselves. So, okay, that is good. I'm gonna walk a little bit toward the, I don't know if I will, I can't see what I'm showing you, but I'm gonna walk toward the waterfalls, okay? I think I've been alone here. There might be, I don't know if anyone else is here now, but uh, it's just a very, it's very remote. And uh, unfortunately my new car got dinged a little bit, the, the exhaust system, I hope it didn't, uh, it's meant for pickup trucks and Jeeps to drive on the road. So my little uh, Prius didn't do the greatest, but. Okay, God bless you all. We'll see you, uh, uh, I'll be back on campus Wednesday night, and uh, but not this weekend, I'll see you the, uh, after that. Okay, see ya.